there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. You're the all-sufficient sacrifice so freely given such a bright bought our redemption heaven's gate swing wide there is power in the name of Jesus there is power there is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, and break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There's an army rising up. There's an army. There's an army rising up to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. God's people said? Amen. Amen. I want to, on behalf of Bergen Baptist Church, I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, we're honored that uh, you've taken time of your day to help us honor the Lord Jesus and to celebrate with us where God has brought us to uh, this exciting day. And um, when you think about this exciting day, it's good for us to think about our church history just for a, a few moments. Um, as a church, we have sent uh, members of our church to Poland. Uh, to Africa, to Greece, to go share the unchanging message of Jesus. Also, we have been on trips to Ohio and then Tennessee and in Utah to share the good news. And I know this is a true thing. I know this uh, firsthand that we've been all over this state, up and down, all across it, sharing the love of Christ by serving and by building things and sharing our faith. And this is where we are today. God is equipping us today uh, in the weeks to come, to serve our community in ways we've only ever dreamed of before. Amen? That's where we are today. And uh, we're going to have a tool at our disposal that will give us a platform that we've never had before to reach our community with the love of Jesus and uh, the good news about forgiveness found only in Christ. So today, uh, we're glad you're here to uh, celebrate with us, with us as we break ground and it's a vision God has given us many, many years ago. Um, I think this is a, such a true statement for us today that good things come to those who wait, not hesitate. Amen? So we're, we're, we're moving forward today. And I want to welcome and recognize Net Construction. If you all would please stand. Uh, Blake and uh, Mark and their better halves are here with them as well. Uh, behind every good man, there's a good woman, right? We know that for sure, and we appreciate uh, them so much. Uh, we have, uh, they have walked with us for about three years, I think it is, roughly. And uh, on behalf of our family of faith, I want to thank you all uh, for your patience with us, um, for your time, certainly your talent, and also your help. And we look forward with anticipation to be finished in three months. Amen. Three months is going to be an exciting time. 
Also, I want to thank those who um, are our elected officials. Uh, we appreciate your support and uh, being here with us today. Uh, your simple presence, we thank you for serving our communities. We certainly do. And uh, to our family of faith, um, it's really hard to believe that we're here. It seems to me that we've talked about this, prayed about this, and talked about it like it's never going to happen. Amen? It's been so long in coming, but we've talked and we've prayed, we've dreamed, we've prayed some more, and uh, we are here today because of our faith in the one who can do things beyond what we can ever think or imagine. That's why we're here. And so today I want to acknowledge uh, some, some individuals, our, our building team, and I want to give you a, a brief history of what's happened uh, since we've, we've, we're here today. Uh, some on our building team have served um, a very brief time. Others have served throughout the duration. And, uh, but I know this is so true that everybody that has been on our, our, our building committee or the building team, uh, each one has brought us and contributed and got us where we are today. Each one has. So I say thank you. But our building team started officially uh, January 2011. And it was by a different name. It was called the Exploratory Committee. And it included on that committee Gene Robinson, who's here today with us, Irma Woodrow's here, Amy Branham, Amy Price, Lee Qualls, Linda Vanderkamp, and Doug Long. And um, the committee eventually became, officially became the building committee in February 2012. At that time, Jim Carpenter, Sonny Jarman, Mike Robinson, and Rita Johnson were added. Then in May of 2014, Jim Thomas, Larry Inman, Mickey Phillips, Bill Sanders were added. And then in September, Tim Bell. And then in June of 2014, Jim Thomas became our chairman. And I want to recognize those who are serving presently on the building team. If you'd please stand just for a moment until I get done calling all the names. Uh, Larry Inman. I know Larry's here. Bill Sanders. Mickey Phillips. Rita Johnson. Irma Woodrow. Amy Price, Tim Bell, and Jim Thomas. So I want to thank you all for what you have helped us get to today. And uh, your prayers, your contribution, what you brought to the table, the time, your talents, all those things, we appreciate it. But I'm going to give Jim Thomas just a, a few moments to share with us. And uh, uh, So Jim, please come.
Um, there have been a lot of challenges to, um, that we've overcome to make it to this day uh, that we break ground. And I remember when I was interviewed by Gene Robinson uh, with the Pulpit Committee, I think it was 2007, pretty sure. And I was asked if I would be willing at that moment to endure a building program. That's been a long time ago. And I said, well, if that's what the Lord wants... Certainly, that's what we will do. And it all started, as I said earlier, our deacons made a, made a request uh, for permission to uh, select a, a committee to study how the programs of our church could be enhanced with uh, additional space. And uh, that was in December of 2010. That was the exploratory committee. Uh, and then in uh, January 2011, uh, a line item was established in our budget so that we could start raising monies for this. And then in 2012, the committee was then entitled Building Committee, officially. And I know, I ask um, if anybody knew how many times we've met. And um, nobody could even come close to a guess. I, I don't know. I know we have spent countless hours in meetings, uh, traveling. Uh, some of you all have traveled with us to look at other facilities. And um, we've interviewed contractors. And I was pro probably hundreds of emails sent back and forth uh, but all that work, there has been a, a constant uh, and deliberate prayer that's been lifted up on our behalf and to the Heavenly Father for His help. And I can remember uh, in the early days of our committee meetings, uh, we had polled the church, did a survey of what the church, uh, how we should proceed and what the church would like to do and all those things. And every time that the committee met together, the building got smaller. Because our focus was, what can we afford? And as Jim said, when he first came aboard, well, we've been trying to save money for a long time, and it's just hard to, it's hard to raise money, right? And we were going by what we could afford, what we could accomplish ourselves. And it was very frustrating to me, and I'm sure it was to all of us. And I remember in my quiet time, I was, I'd be praying, Lord, if you don't want us to build this building, Lord, help us quit wasting our time. I'm tired of meeting. I'm tired of all this. I just, if, if you want it to happen, Lord, help us. And I, I, don't, um, I don't just open the Bible up and start reading and get a word from the Lord. What I do is I, read, uh, I pick a spot and I read through a whole book at one time or something like that. I was going through Isaiah at that time. And I had been crying out to the Lord, Lord, um, do you want us to do this or not? Should we uh, continue on with our meetings and all those things? Or, or should we just stop and go a different direction? And this is the scripture that I read that morning, and it answered my struggle. See if you can catch on. It says in Isaiah 54, enlarge your house. Pretty clear. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, and spare no expense. It goes on to say, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Don't be afraid, there is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your past. I shared that with the committee, 
And uh, together we talked about that at great lengths. And we decided that Lord had spoken to us and we embraced it. And that is really when things began to change within our church body. We started making decisions based on faith. Well, we can't afford that, but still, maybe that's what God wants. And everything kind of changed. And uh, another scripture that's been a... Uh, that God's placed before us. I know I've shared it on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesdays numerous times that I see, can't seem to get past. In Matthew chapter 9, it says, According to your faith, it will be done unto you. And uh, I remember those week long meetings we had. I don't know the year, I didn't look it up, but the year where each part of our ministries of our church, what we did, we had uh, week long meetings Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we invited our church members to sign up for one of those days. And the building committee, the contractors, and we would sit and we would share the vision God had given us. And we would talk about what we were going to do with it, all those things. For four nights we did that. And I remember that fateful Sunday we voted the following, next, the following week. And we voted 85% to build when we reached half the funds necessary. Now, until about uh, three weeks ago, I didn't realize what that meant exactly. I, I just had my mind clouded. But if you're going to build the building or start building the building when you have half the funds, where's the other half coming from? You talk about a step of faith. That means I guess you're going to either raise it all real quick or borrow it, right? That's what you would assume. I, that never even entered my mind. But uh, you talk about faith, and I remember having that thermometer in the foyer and watching it inch up ever so slowly and uh, we kept planning and kept praying by faith. And uh, I remember on a Wednesday night, for some reason, we started thanking God for the resources to pay for the building. Yet we haven't got the design plan all finished yet. We started thanking God for the laborers who would step up and help uh, do ministries in the new building that we're thinking about by faith. Then we started thanking the Lord for the, the ministries that would take place that we have yet to dream of. We were just thanking the Lord for what he was going to do. And then um, I remember um, the phone call I got, the text messages I got, and I remember getting the letter in the mail concerning God's miraculous provision for us. You talk about just shouting ground. Uh, you're, you're, you're stepping out on faith. You don't have the resource to do anything anyway close to this magnitude, and God just provides that's the God we serve. Amen? Amen. So I remember in, uh, we went from having little to much. And uh, it's been a challenge, though, when you think about it, because uh, when we have little, it's easy to think by faith when you have little. But when you have much, it's easy to revert back to the old way of thinking and start walking by sight. So we had a few faith exams along the way, but I praise the Lord that today we're here because of our faith in Almighty God and because of His gracious hand upon us. And um, so may we never forget, never forget that God honors faith. He honors faith. And uh, we've dreamed of this day, we've prayed for it, and we've asked for God's help, we've asked for His wisdom, asked for His guidance, His knowledge, and uh, to do in us what we're not used to. And he's been doing that a great deal. But underneath all of our requests, we've been, I think you could say, we're asking for God's hand. God, keep your hand upon us. Help, help us as we, as we follow after you. And in the book of Nehemiah, we, uh, uh, Nehemiah, he spoke of, uh, he was asked of how he expected to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. And his answer was simple yet profound. He said, the gracious hand of God is on us. And my, my friends, that's why we're here today. Because of God's gracious hand. But let's just pray just for a moment and thank God for his provision and his hand. Father, we thank you so much for today. And we are standing where we are because of your gracious hand. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for the vision you have given us. We thank you, Lord, in advance for the laborers and the workers, uh, the ministries that will be done. And God, we praise you for the moms and dads and the boys and girls that will enter your kingdom because of our obedience. God, we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you know the reason why. I'm sure you do, but I want to remind you. Why are we doing all of this? 
Well, let me tell you why we're, we're doing all of this is because it's what we believe. Now, this is something we started doing not too long ago, but this is what we believe. We have this little bracelet we wear, and the first little symbol is a heart. That means that God loves you. Amen? He gave his son. He loves us. He created all that we see it's because he loves us. God loves us. But the problem is the next little symbol is a division symbol. That top dot could symbolize God. The bottom dot can symbolize us, and that line is our sin that separates us from God. So God loves us, but there's a problem. But the good news is God came to our rescue by sending his son. The next symbol is a cross. See, Jesus came, he lived his life, and he, he sacrificed himself so that we could be saved. He stood in our place taking God's wrath on our behalf so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And the last little symbol is a question. Has there ever been a time in your life where you have trusted Jesus as your Savior and Lord? If not, why not today? That's what we believe. That's what we're banking on. That's why we're building. Because we want to share with our community the love that Jesus has for all people. And the salvation that he will offer to all who will believe. Amen? That's why we are here. And that's what we're, why we're doing. And uh, this new facility, when it's built, the purpose of it all is not for any a man's acclaim. The purpose is to lift up Jesus. That's the purpose. So uh, let me ask you a question. I mean that with all the seriousness of my heart. Has there ever been a time in your life where you turned away from your sin and you turned to Jesus and you surrendered your heart and your life to him. If not, what a great day to kick a building off for that purpose than see someone get saved today. It can happen. See, the God that we serve, he can save. He's still in the saving business. So if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior... With all within me, I would say, please consider what God has done to show his love for you so that you could be forgiven and put your faith and your trust in him now. No greater thing you could ever do. Now, th what we want is we want our community to hear of God's love. That's why we're building. We want our community to embrace the love of God. We want our community to experience the forgiveness of God. And after they experience that forgiveness, we want them to join us in helping lift up Jesus. That's what we want. And this new center that we're building, it's going to be a great tool. It's going to help us uh, share that good news to reach moms and dads and boys and girls. That's what it's going to help us do. Now, this is what the Bible tells us. We know this story that Jesus was crucified on Friday. We know that. But on the third day, Resurrection Sunday, the ground began to move. Jesus rose from the dead, offering freedom, offering forgiveness, offering redemption. And it's fitting, I think, today that in faith, we're going to move ground. Because our Savior moved ground, and we have a mission. Amen? Amen. That's what we're going to do. Now, you should have received a wooden stake coming in. About this long, you have those stakes. Now, you are asked to do something with those. So, and these stakes that you have, if you don't have one, raise your hand. If you don't have a stake. They snuck in the side doors, what they did. <laughs> Keep your hands up so she, loud and proud so she can see you. All right. Let's see. Hey, Bill, would you mind go getting one of those stakes and help them pass out on this side? That would be great. Not too bad, having just a few miss, amen? But what, what these stakes are, these are stakes, they're, they're really, they're, they're literal stakes, but they're also very symbolic. And um, uh, let me explain how we're going to use these uh, to my family of faith first. Uh, we have been praying for our one. And we can't reach everybody with Jesus, but we can all reach one. We've been praying for our one for several months, so you can write your one on there if you want to. Just write their first name, who you're praying for to come know Christ. 
And uh, then, or maybe you just say this, well, I've put my one on there, but also maybe a Bible promise that you want to claim today for the new ministry that's coming our way. One of those two things. And uh, to our guest, we're honored that you're here, but we ask that you would pray for us. Uh, we certainly covet your prayers, but maybe you have someone also that you are, you would love to see them come to faith in Jesus Christ. Right there in that first name on there, and uh, or maybe uh, you would say this, you know, uh, I want to, uh, here, here's a Bible promise, I'm going to pray for your church, for this ministry that is approaching. Now, maybe by chance you're here and you would look say, I'm looking at my life right now. And I don't know the forgiveness of sin. I've never trusted Jesus. But today, I'm starting over and I'm trusting Jesus. And we're going to go out there in a minute and put our stakes in the ground. So we all have a stake in our community. Amen? We have, we have, and we have some things that we are to do as Christians. So, um, so we're going to do that in just a moment. But let me introduce you to, the, to those who are going to have a shovel in their hand. Uh, our deacon chairman, Jerry Shepard, our trustee chairman, Ron Roberts, uh, building chairman, Jim Thomas, and our oldest active member could not be here, uh, Miss Dean, uh, but uh, David Sims is going to take her place. And our youngest member, I believe, is here, Imperia Blackader. And then we have two of our biggest fans, I guess you would say, special folks to all of our hearts. Uh, uh, one didn't, under, didn't know till I think, this afternoon that they were going to have a shovel in their hand. I didn't tell them. Uh, I was afraid they wouldn't come. Um, but uh, Gene Robinson is going to have a shovel in his hand. And uh, he started this off way back in 2007 when he talked to me. And then Miss Patsy Sims. Uh, they have been two of our biggest cheerleaders, I guess you would say, in encouraging us to uh, not to give up and to keep moving forward in faith. So we appreciate them. Now, as we'll go outside in just a moment... I'm going to ask uh, everybody has their stake. Go on out there and don't wait. Just stick it in the ground. Put that stake in the ground and then just kind of watch where you see the dirt's been turned up just a little bit out there. And uh, those who are going to have uh, shovels in their hands, uh, they're on a table out here to your right. And if you'll walk out there um, and you'll, if you'll face this direction, because I was told pictures would look better from this side. Okay? So uh, we have chairs for those who may not be able to stand the whole time. But... So, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask those who have their stakes in their hand to go out there and put them in, not the blacktop. <laughs> that won't work, I promise. Put it in the dirt. And with all the refreshing of rain yesterday, it should go in relatively easy. And uh, if you'll kind of gather around, kind of a circle-like around the, where the, the, those who have shovels in their hands, and uh, after they turn the dirt, we'll kind of get around our, our footprint, not the whole thing, but part of it, and we'll pray, and then we'll be dismissed. Is that clear? So I'm going to pray, and then if you've got a stake, go on out there and place it in the ground, and those who have shells will be falling right in behind you. So let's pray together. Lord, we love you today, and we thank you so much for all that you have done. We give you the credit. We give you the glory for the great things you have done. Father, if it were not for your hand upon us, we would not be where we are today. And God, we give you the praise. Lord, as we look forward as to what is about to happen, God, we are excited because we know that as a result of our efforts and how you honor faith, that there will be a, more people in heaven because of the way you have provided for us. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yep. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the season uh, that is ahead. We ask for your blessings. We ask for your help. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.